The Galloway Hydro Scheme was a breathtakingly ambitious means of tapping into the renewable power of water through the Galloway Glens. It begins here in Loch Doon, travels down through the Glen Kens to Loch Ken and then through the Dee until it reaches Tongland and the Solway Firth. Surprisingly, there were many attempts made to use the water of Loch Doon for hydroelectrics long before the Galloway Hydro Scheme, but they mostly foundered on the issue of what should be done about preserving the salmon hatcheries in the loch. Another problem that was encountered was what might need to be done to preserve Loch Doon Castle. The first attempt at a hydroelectric scheme here at Loch Doon was planned in the 1890s when a feasibility study was commissioned for Air Town Council. The report put the cost of a hydro scheme out with the council's budget, so they built a coal-fired plant instead that was opened in 1896 by Lord Kelvin. Interest in a hydroelectric scheme at the loch didn't go away though, and in fact was resurrected a number of times before it finally became a reality. Only three years after the first attempt, the Marquis of Ailsa commissioned another report, but that also concluded that the building of a dam would impact the salmon hatcheries detrimentally. In 1916, as part of the failed construction of an aerial gunnery school at Loch Doon, a small dam was built here at the northern outlet of the loch, where the Bonny Doon begins its journey to air. It raised the level of the loch by 1.8 metres, or 6 feet, and was supposed to provide the gunnery school with all its electrical needs. But the scheme was such a disaster, the dam was never used. A new Electricity Act at Westminster revived interest in a scheme at Loch Doon in 1919. And in 1923, the first proposal for a scheme running from Loch Doon through Loch Ken and down to Kirkcumpry was made. But a disagreement between Airtown Council, the Kilmarnock Corporation and Air Borough Council prevented this from moving any further. In 1926, the Electricity Supply Act created the first national grid and independent electricity board and for the first time the cost of an extensive hydro scheme like the Galloway one would be worth the benefit. Steam stations like the one owned by the Kilmarnock Corporation that Airtown Council had been purchasing its power from are very slow to switch on and off power production but hydropower can be brought online very quickly so it can be used to meet the fast changing demands of the grid much more easily. Additionally, because rainfall is always higher in the winter in Scotland, hydro schemes can much more easily meet the greater power demands of winter. Now, the first grid scheme to link the central belt to England went through Carlisle, making the idea of a Galloway hydro scheme even more desirable since it would be relatively easy to attach it to the national grid. The Central Electricity Board commissioned another report into the feasibility of a Galloway hydro scheme in 1927. The report was published in 1928 and proposed five stations along the scheme, Cain Dune, Kersfad, Earlston, Glenlee and Tungland. The bill which created the scheme gained royal assent on the 10th of May 1929 and the Galloway Water Power Company was incorporated on the same day but due to ongoing neg negotiations with the CEB work did not begin until 1932. At Loch Doon, which stood at the head of one fork of the scheme, the other one is at Clattering Shaws, a dam was built at the same site where the smaller dam had been built for the gunnery school across the outlet of the River Doon. It would hold back the water of Duch, the Bowburn and the Dune for storage. The waters would be released through the Dune Duch tunnel through a valve located at Drum John into Ken Dune Loch, then down through the scheme eventually to the Dee Tungland and the Solway. As the previous attempts at building hydro schemes at Loch Dune had foundered on the issue of the Atlantic salmon hatcheries, a serious attempt had to be made to address this. Salmon ladders had not been much of a concept on previous occasions, but the high variation in the water levels expected in the loch 
meant that no ordinary salmon ladder would do the job anyway. An octagonal ladder was built into the dam wall, which contains float controlled sluice gates that keep the water levels high enough inside the ladder, regardless of the levels in the loch. Now, it wasn't until 1934 that attention was properly turned to the fate of Loch Doon Castle. An initial proposal to regrout the castle was abandoned when it became obvious that the raise in level of Loch Doon would swamp the building. It had been realised at this very late stage that the dam would raise the level by about 10 metres or approximately 30 feet. The Marquis of Ailsa provided land opposite the castle aisle for the main part of the building to be moved to. A causeway was built to the aisle and the castle was moved piece by piece along it to preserve it and its unique windows and door arches. The CEB was reluctant to fund all of the 4,000 estimated cost to relocate the castle until Sir John Sterling Maxwell of the Ancient Monuments Board intervened with a letter to the company warning about the scandal that would ensue if the castle was sacrificed for the sake of a mere thousand pounds, the last part of the cash that was actually needed. After all, the castle had belonged to the Bruces and it was where Sir Christopher Seaton was captured after going into hiding for his part in the murder of the Red Cummin. The CEB relented and the castle was moved stone by stone to its new location, although the foundations still remain on the castle aisle. With the issues of the salmon and the castle finally resolved, the building of the Galloway Hydro Scheme could begin.